All right, so we're back with the door open, and um, it, I gotta tell you, it smells amazing right here. These crap apple blooms smell, they're so fragrant. Um, they smell absolutely fantastic. But these are the, these are the, the crap apples, right? Yeah. Okay, and we're in the little garden. Now, is this a historical garden? Is this yeah. where the, the garden was for the family? So we actually think the garden stretched all the way across back here. And we know even into the early 20th century it did. Um, but the Garden Club of Virginia, which is based in Richmond, were a site of theirs, and they helped us do research uh, in the 1980s to create this historically based garden. So we have six little beds with different types of herbs and other plants. Right, we're right in front of what I call the dessert bed when we're with kids. So we have blackberry, raspberry, gooseberry, rhubarb, and strawberry nice. plants in here. Please pardon our weeds. They haven't learned how to pick themselves yet, but, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll be getting this all cleaned up. And then in this bed we have dye plants. So these are plants that all have to do with, with textiles um, and dyeing. So this is matter, uh, red root. Uh, coming up in this area next will be a plant called tansy that has a yellow flower. And then um, a, a, we have something called um, false indigo, which has a blue flower. So once you have right. red, yellow, and blue, you can pretty much make any color you need. Uh, we grow onions in here and chives because they're flowers. Well, the onion skins and then the chive flowers can, can be dyes. And then these bushy plants here, they'll probably be one of the first to bloom. These are flax plants. So that's what uh, linen is okay. made out of. Oh, that's flax, like yeah. flax seed. Okay. Yep, and you, can, you might even be able to yeah, find a little flax seed on here. All right. Yeah, it's a really pretty periwinkle blue flower. Nice. These are medicinal flower, or medicinal herbs. This is usually where we garden for flowers, and that usually are the, the perennials that come up last. Um, this is for aromatics, so basically the uh, 19th century Febreze, <laughs> your um, yarrow and rosemary, lavender, aromatic plants, and then up here we have our culinary herbs, and a lot of these don't tend to winter over. So I'm trusting you. <laughs> All right. It's very lemony. Kids love it. I think it's like a, like a lemon head. That's bright. Wow. It's a... Yeah. It's a very, so it's great in salads. A lot of people are trying to plant their own gardens right now. Seeds, I think, are in high demand. Um, but every time we've let a kid taste one of these sorrel leaves, they're like, they're big fans. Awesome. So... Um, it's nice. It's real, the perfect way to serve it is actually in a really creamy soup, like a potato leek soup, and then that little bright lemony okay. green on top is a really nice garnish. And now you had some really pretty. We'll walk over to these really. Yeah, these are. This vibrant. is kind of a wildflower that pops up here, called uh, tulip sylvestris. I just featured it on our Facebook post, and there's a link to it, and. It's like a little wild tulip, and apparently Thomas Jefferson was a big fan. So Thomas Jefferson has a couple links to Bell Grove, namely that he helped design the manor house. And um, he's of course known for his love of botany. And uh, we have tried to dig up these, these bulbs before. They are deep, deep in the ground and teeny tiny. <laughs> so it kind of, it's one of those plants that just does its own thing. These are gonna be the peonies they're just starting. The shoots are just starting right oh, now. Oh, wow. But okay. um, peony time at Bell Grove is a wonderful time. It should be early May. Early May. Okay. Maybe we'll have to come back then. You might have to come back. So, then, yeah, right. we had a pretty busy winter here. Um, had the, the roof just done on the barn. Actually, it's a great view to look back. Oh, yeah. You can see the lights in there, what it must be like to have an event in there in the evening. Uh, we had the Garden Club of Virginia got a wonderful donation from our tree experts, and they did a lot of pruning around here, which I'm very grateful for in a day of high wind. Uh, they had to take down that tree because it was injured, and that's how we got that mulch pile, which is great. 
There you go. That'll be right under all of the uh, lilac hedge in there. Also had a partnership with the Shenandoah Valley Audubon, and they've got some bluebird boxes going. They think they've spotted some nests. Good. So a few of their volunteers are still coming by to check on those. I'm always happy Even to see that. Closed. I manage one of those trails myself. So. Yeah. Big bluebird fan. And the Garden Club of Virginia also helps us with our our historic tree plants. So a lot of these are native or historic trees. Um, these are red buds. They're just starting out here. Of course, our red buds. I drove be by a couple that are they're, they're, yeah, different, they're here, different places. These Big are excitement this week. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's noticing nature a little bit more these days. And we have a cardinal family that lives in these trees. Um, and Mr. Cardinal was seeing his reflection in the windows, yeah. getting pretty mad at it. <laughs> um, we were worried for his, his life. They're challenging this time of year. Yeah. Uh, that's purple. No, looks like they're purple. Not. Bell Group also has areas that are in conservation reclamation enhancement program. So that that little area down there you might see with the little trees, that that's one of those areas. It's actually a little wetlands, and we really see a lot of um, beautiful birds congregating there. Um, probably not safe to walk, to 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 leave your car there, but if you would ever want to park in our lot and walk down the road. It's been nice and quiet lately and <laughs> it makes a nice a nice little country walk. Well, this is beautiful. This is a shame you're not open right now. But I know. It is so one of the most wonderful times of year. So thanks for doing this virtual tour. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as I said, uh, this is the home of the Height family and they um, married into the Madison family. So Madison's sister, Nellie, lived here with Isaac Height. And when it came time to build this house, he wrote to his friend Thomas Jefferson and said, my brother-in-law is building a home and wonders if his builder can come and meet with you. So we don't have any wonderful blueprints signed Thomas Jefferson, but there's a lot of Jeffersonian qualities of the house. It's basically a one-story home on a raised basement. And uh, hoping in the next couple of weeks, we're actually gonna have an interior a virtual reality experience that we'll get out online. We've been working with Shenandoah University. Oh, well, that'll be so awesome. So watch for that, yeah. And um, So we won't go inside. We won't go inside. We'll, 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 we'll leave that. that. That'll be your little teaser. Yeah, and it's it's not very long. It's not as extensive as, as our regular tour, but it's told from the perspective of Isaac Hyde's second wife, Anne. And I think that kind of makes it kind of interesting. Um, looking to build up an education page with a couple of like activities for the kids. Um, any history teachers out there, if you want to set an appointment with me, I'd be happy to Skype with your classroom or what have you, if to give you a, a virtual tour. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, so this is your look here. And then uh, again, this, so this is Friday, the April 3rd. So that's kind of where we are this time of year. This is what it looks like here. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll probably come back out in May because it sounds like we're going to be shut down in yeah, May, too. We'll so see. maybe we'll yeah. come back first week of May for That'd you. Be and, wonderful. And uh, take a look and see what else has bloomed. And uh, maybe we can, uh, that time we can talk about the enslaved quarters and, and that, that yeah. whole program that you guys are doing. And, uh, and uh, we're hoping so. that uh, Matt Greer will be back by mid-May. He's planning to be back this summer. He's our archaeologist that has been researching the enslaved quarter archaeologically, which is just right over the Yeah, I can see right there. And uh, one of our next projects is actually to install an exhibit. See where the where the kind of the rope is down there? Yeah. Is that where they're working on it? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave that for next time. Great. We'll leave a little teaser for you there too. And uh, what's that growing against the side of the? So this here is a apple tree that is on a. Um, it's trained on this. A trellised. Yep. Apple it's called, tree. It's a French word called espalier. And we did a hard pruning of it to sort of, it had gotten a little out of hand, but. Um, I've never seen that before. Yeah, but it's trained to grow that way, to grow flat against a building. I didn't know you could do that. Oh yeah. Huh. 
Yep. Shows what I know. Okay. <laughs> well, that's fascinating. Oh, I can play close to that. That's interesting. And there's your, uh, these are all the... Yep, those tulips the, and the peonies. The peonies. It's going to be beautiful. Yep. All right. So I just need to put in some hours weeding. And we're all good. <laughs> well, we got time, so. Yep, we got time. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And um, we will, uh, we'll be back here in... Uh, couple weeks to a month. Sounds so. great. All right. Thank Thanks, you so Justin. much. All right.